Greetings, everyone. This is Chandra Gore coming to you all live tonight. This is Thursday night at eight with Lens of Faith. And tonight we have Brother Demetrius Blaylock on the line with us on the live line in today's session of Walking in Your Purpose. We have a special treat for you tonight, you all. I pray that you all will be blessed by this broadcast. Stand by. Welcome to Walking in Your Purpose. This is Thursday night at 8 with Men's It's time to discover the gift God has for you. I'm bringing awareness to what God has for you and the purpose behind your pain. If you have passion in your soul and a gift you haven't unleashed, well, 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 let's talk about it. Having served in the United States Army for the last 18 years and continuing to serve as a servant leader to inspire, motivate, guide, and assist veterans, I'm bringing a contemporary vibe to being happy and living your dream on purpose. Each week, I will introduce you to a life filled with purpose and how that purpose is being used to glorify God, describing the tips, resources, and strategies to set you up for success. So now, let's jump right in and discover the gift God has for you. I pray that everyone is enjoying their evening. Hello, once again, this is Chandra Gore coming to you live. This is Lens of Faith Speaks, Walking in Your Purpose, episode number three. This is our third week launching this live podcast platform. Welcome, Demetrius Blaylock. How are you, brother? I'm fine. <laughs> good, 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 good. Glad you are fine. We are blessed with your presence this evening. So let me just jump right in and tell you all a little bit about Demetrius Blaylock. He is the owner and founder of Sip Drinks, one of the founding members of Kappa Lambda Chi, Military Fraternity Incorporated, founded July 4th, 2013. A retired veteran of the United States Army as of April 26, 2009. A Mason, a member of Eastern Star and Turtle, also a father of a daughter and twin boys. Blaylock began his Army career March 3rd, 1992, and has been stationed in many places such as Fort Hood, Texas, Car Fort Carson, Colorado, Olympic Center, Colorado, the Joint Task Force in Cuba, Fort Bragg, North Carolina, and Germany. He recently underwent a major surgery that has forever changed his life. He began having heart trouble back in 2009 and has since undergone two heart transplant surgeries. Demetrius, welcome to the show. Tell everyone what's going on, how you doing today, and just break it on down to us and tell us who Demetrius Blaylock is. Well, how you doing? Glad to be here. My name is Demetrius. Everybody know me as Grave Digger, but it, I really love, love it to be here. It's been a lot. I'm doing a lot of stuff right now. I'm getting ready to go to the Transplant Olympics, which mm -hmm. is in Phoenix City. Uh, Salt Lake City on August the 2nd through the 7th. Okay. Okay. All right. Tell us what you're going to be doing at the Olympics. Oh, what I'm going to be doing up there is going to be the track and field, like 800 meters, 400 meter relay, um, two mile run, and then volleyball. Okay. Get something. <laughs> so you actually participated in all three events? Yes, it should be like three or four of them. Yes. Okay. All right. Now tell us who Grave Digger is. How did you get that name? <laughs> well, we got the name when we started all the original nine. We decided to get names and we put a name for like general. So it's like almost five, six thousand dollars five, six thousand general names. I looked at them all and decided, hey, grave digger is for me. Why grave digger? Because it comes from the grave. And then bring yourself back up. Like I said, start from the bottom down here. All right. I, I didn't imagine that. I was waiting to hear how you got that name. I was waiting to hear that. So you basically said that you started from the bottom and now you're here. So tell us a little bit about where you're at today. Today, I'm at a place that's thankful to be here. I'm in a real good place. A real good state of mind. 
I can't be judgmental or anything like that because God has blessed me beyond measure. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, what have you learned or discovered by going through a heart transplant in terms of your purpose driven life? I've learned that what you see, you learn a lot. It's a lot you can learn that when you go through something like that, you have to go through a lot and you have learned a lot of yourself and everybody else and what this world is about. So as long as like a lot that you like, you want to see as bad as you want to breathe. You want to be, I mean, you have to be, when you want to be successful, you have to get out there and make it yourself. You can't count on anybody else. can't count on your mother, brother, or anybody else. If you want to get it, it's out there. That's right. That's right. Now, take us back to the day when you discovered that you was having heart trouble back in 2009. Right. It was in 2009 when I got out the military. I wanted to go back over to see to work. And then I had a problem doing something. They said I had a walking ammonia. I'm like, mm -hmm. you know what? It's time. I'm two years from here. Time to go. Came back home. Had a trouble. I put the pacemaker in. Then it was like, okay, pacemaker working. I'm fine. I'm good. Mm -hmm. Take the medicine, which I didn't take the medicine. <laughs> and I had to take a put on a vest just in case if my heart stopped. This vest will have all the stuff. It will shock you and will have it will tell you in a minute to stand back and blah blah blah. So I put that on for like two months. Everything's fine. All of a sudden, hey, can I get this? This is not working. <laughs> I'm fine. No problem. Mm -hmm. Snap it off. With 2015, in North Carolina. Sorry. I'm sorry, you can say something. Yeah, we're starting to lose you a little bit. Your picture is coming in pixelated. Not sure about your connection, but you're a little blurry right now. Not sure. But um, so you went overseas, took a job, discovered that you had some heart trouble. Um, they thought it was walking pneumonia, you said? Yes. Okay. All right. Then they inserted a pacemaker and flew you back to the right. United States? No, I came back to the United States. I'm like, okay, that's it. Money's not worth my life. And so I came back, noticed that it was still having trouble when I came back to the United States. And then I had to get a, a pacemaker put in, placed in. Okay. All right. Let's see if you can move your phone a little bit to see if we can get your picture back because we can't really see you. Uh, yeah, I can see you, but it's it's kind of pixelated. I'm not sure what's going on, but I'm just keep I'm gonna just keep going. So you face some some rather difficult challenges as you return to the United States from your overseas mission. What challenges did you face before and after the heart the first heart transplant surgery? Challenges is, is, is being because like now it was the L valve. What it is now, they open up. Now they put in a hole in my heart, and then from the hole they put a machine in there, and the machine okay. they put a, a tube that's going to my artery. Mm -hmm. That that the uh, heart is stopped now, completely stopped. Now all the blood is going flowing through that machine, constantly okay. every day. And now it's like now I'm wearing batteries, so it's one. It's like two batteries. This okay. machine, I got I got a tube sticking out of my stomach and the plug against the machine. It keeps constant every day, every day. At nighttime, I have to take that out and plug into the wall. Now, if I want to use the bathroom, it goes somewhere, it's like a 50-foot cord. So now, it's like, you know what? I can't do it like that. I don't have a heartbeat or I have I don't have a pulse. Right now? So that's what we're doing. No, before. Okay, before, before. The before. Before the first heart transplant surgery, you didn't have a heartbeat or a pulse. No. So you were basically walking around pretty much like deadlined. Explain that to us. <laughs> it was like it was a left ventricle, like saying it was a machine that was, it was 
beating for my heart. So now okay. like saying the heart was just beating. So now the heart is just resting. Now only thing I'm doing now is the machine is taking over now. His machine is beating. I mean the machine okay. is going constantly flowing, flowing, flowing and out. So okay. it's like, okay, if I want to go to sleep, I take two batteries out, the two twelve hours. So if I wanted to go to sleep, now I take the batteries out, hook up to the wall. The wall unit. It's got to be constantly going, going and going. So it's like people like saying, oh, there's no way you can't have a heartbeat or a pulse. But it's oh saying with that God. machine, you can't have, you, it, it's not a pulse. It's not a heartbeat. You can take a pulse. You can take anything. and You cannot get one. It's only oh with a special God. machine. Okay. So it's like, even like that. But I'm so, still, like saying, I'm still living and I'm still doing the same thing as somebody else would. It just, like I am now, you wouldn't notice. I would, I would have had one now. It's like same thing. It just so you, machines. So you had the machine implanted inside your body, and it was basically batteries that was keeping you alive. Correct. My God, bless your soul. Bless your soul. I that's a lot to take in. That is a lot to take in <laughs> right now, and I'm I'm really amazed. You are supposed to be here. You are you supposed know what, to yeah, be you just, <laughs> One, you live like that, it's like, okay, now I can do the stuff I can, but it's not, you're not breathing. I mean, your heart is not beating. It's now just relaxed. <laughs> it's just basically there. Oh. So I'm like, no, I can't live like that. I'm, I did that for one year. Matter of fact, it was one year I got implanted May and then May the 15th, August the 16th. Is when I had the heart transplant. I had to go back through it again. Oh, now geez. it's like, okay. Now I'm telling when people say, "Do you want to do this? Do you mm -hmm. want to have a heart?" People like, like saying, people always saying, "Oh, I want to have a heart. I want to have right. a heart. It's not sitting on the top of no shelf, or anything. That won't be saying, donate, donate, because right. if it wasn't for my donation, I needed one. Needed now, one where did you get the first heart from? Did they tell you? No, at a year you don't tell. Like now, I don't know who's it from. It's all the same. Okay. It was it was a thirty six year old male. Oh my god! So, so I, you know, do the paperwork at the year. You do a paperwork, put the paperwork in, and then like they send it to the family. But it's your right. name's not on that. It's like if they want to contact you, they like okay, yes, let me contact the hospital. Right. Then the hospital contact you, and then cut out the middleman. You can contact both y'all contact. It's just like saying when the family's ready. Oh my goodness! Look so right at now, like, yeah, I don't know. Just a. Oh, you don't ago. know. You don't know where you got the first or the second heart from, correct? No. Oh my goodness! Just a guardian angel, a guardian angel. Right. So, how significant is it to be a donor? What What would you tell people about donating their oh, organs? Yeah, yeah. Like one hundred percent, people are like. You know, we got this myth. We some blank. We have this myth of saying that, oh, they're gonna take my blood. They're gonna take this and sell it. They're gonna do this. I seen this, and you haven't seen. It. I mean, if you're pass away and you're able to take these, them, it, like I said, I imagine like if I'm burying two million dollars. Mm -hmm. If you're burying two million dollars and you're not gonna pay and get it, it's just there. Nobody can use it. Like we said. Like some people, if you believe whoever you believe in, that when you die, you're gonna be resurrected somewhere. That you don't, I mean, you don't need that. It's gonna be a new body, new soul, new everything. So why not? But if right. it wasn't for that person, if it wasn't for donation, like I'm saying, donate, 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 that we don't have chances. It's, um, it's, it's a lot of people waiting on hearts, waiting on lungs, waiting on this and waiting on that. Wow, my for God. donation. And like I I know, like you know, I've talked to people at the hospital. They had double lungs plus mm -hmm. a heart transplant. Ooh, that's a lot. That's a lot. So that's what I'm telling people. I mean, people donate. Or is it on your ID card? Is it on this? I'm a donor. A I'm a donor. <laughs> I decided to become a donor back in 2009. I didn't really understand at first, like, oh, why should I donate my organs? I didn't really get it. But 2009, something struck a nerve in me after I watched the show. And this lady needed a heart and she needed um, a kidney. And so yeah. I was like, oh, my God, I can be a donor. You know, so I, I decided to become a donor back in 2009. And I'm glad that I did, because as we see right now, it is definitely needed. 
you are the recipient of now two, two hearts, correct? Yeah, yeah. No, okay. no one, no, no, no. just one, one right now. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So when I was researching for this topic, this particular topic of the show, I went over this a thousand times in my mind. You know, what's in a name? Demetrius Blaylock versus Gravedigger. Demetrius Blaylock, Blaylock versus Gravedigger. Over and over in my mind. So I came to Ezekiel 39 and 15, which states, as they go through the land, anyone who sees a human bone will leave a marker beside it until the Gravediggers bury it in the Valley of Hamagog. So when I, when I dive into that a little bit, I came upon uh, this reading that, that told me about the number of bodies uh, would be so great that it would seem to fill the valley where they were buried, making it impassable by travelers. There were so many dead bodies that the travelers couldn't even pass through Hamagog at this particular time. It says they were set apart men regularly employed with the help of a search party, which were the grave diggers. The effort to find and bury the remains of God's army would be organized and thorough in order to cleanse the land. The effort would take a total of seven, seven months, seven months. Demetrius, tell me when you think in terms of your name that the fraternity gave you, what does it mean to you? This oh, scripture, like, Ezekiel 39, like 15. Saying, when you look at you're saying Ezekiel, you got to look at what Ezekiel was. He went to Ezekiel to the, the my God is saying that he had a mission, a mission from God telling them what to do. Now, all the graves up there, like saying, we know it was army, army guys that was fighting. And mm -hmm. it, was, it was it was like a man that was, it was like, like a man, some man that was lost. You you had a mission from God to say mm -hmm. do this and do that. They didn't do it. So mm -hmm. now, okay, we're gonna punish you. It's gonna be like saying it, it took seven months for them clean. And if you see a like I'm saying bone or people call it saying, oh, when it didn't say grave digger, but undertaker grave digger still the same. Right. You know, but it's saying that if this you see a bone, leave the sign and let the grave digger um uh, plant it back in, into the ground. Right. Why? Because grave digger know exactly what it need to do, what it need to do the proper way to bury the bones. And bury the bone. Like I said, again, it reminds me like saying that most people take their greatness into the grave, into the graveyard. Uh -huh. We got inventions. We never heard of it in the graveyard. We got mm -hmm. um, dreams that never came true because why? Because they took into the they took everything to the grave with them. You took absolutely the grave, correct. And wow. That's powerful. And I know exactly what you're talking about because I'm reading Destiny now by T.D. Jakes. And he talks about how people don't display their true talents. They're afraid and they end up taking it to the grave. Just what you just said. So many talented people are afraid to live their true life, their authentic life, because they're afraid of what people are going to say. They're afraid to step out and walk by faith. They're just afraid. And I got to tell you, I am blessed by the best and I am walking in my purpose. I yes. am. <laughs> yep. So, so Demetrius, now, who or what did you see on the other side of the light as you went through your season of needing a heart, undergoing surgery and recovering? Oh, you see me. When people like, oh, wait, what I see? I seen this light when I woke up and I seen this, I seen that, I heard. It just ain't like you hearing stuff. What do you hear? What does it sound like? You hear things? Did I see anything? A bright light. <laughs> I'm not with this. Yeah. But it's not saying in a sense, what did I see? It just wouldn't have heard. So what did I hear? What did you what hear? I am today is trying to tell people, like, hey, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. You need to act right again, right? Or, you know what I'm saying? You have this oh. one life. People are saying you got that one life. But it's always, I have two lives that I had to give. You need to walk in your purpose. Don't yeah. wait for somebody else. <laughs> you wait for somebody else. Like I tell people, if you waiting to do something that you don't want to do, you'll be working for somebody else. Like you're saying, me and you and myself. I, I haven't worked since 2009. Mm. Because why? Because I'm blind to the same way I'm I'm trying to work with myself to work my purpose, work my dream. If I don't work for dreams, I'll be working for somebody else and helping them work for their dreams. That's right. 
That's right. Now, when you was getting ready, when they were prepping you for the surgery, what went through your mind be right before that first surgery? What went through your mind? Oh, I had. A, I think I still had the video when I was in the um, in the room. Now I see you. I see you. I'm sorry. You know what? The first, this one is it. The first one I didn't know. But okay. It was when I came back, like saying here. Yeah, now this is going to get. When I came back from my daughter graduation, which is in North Carolina. I drove completely from North Carolina to Atlanta. Then I drove, then my mother drove, I was supposed to drop her off and spend the night. Mm -hmm. So those are points, uh, North Carolina, Georgia, Mississippi, and back to Texas. I drove the whole way back. I dropped her off and I'm like, you know what, it's early, I'm keeping going. Let me mm -hmm. keep on going and I can make it to Texas before I knew it. I came back and I kept smelling something. And like, okay, what is the smell? Uh -huh. And my back and everything started hurting. And it's like, you know what? I got to go to the hospital. Right. I went to the hospital. And then I told, I told him, you know what? I think I'm having a heart attack. Really? <laughs> I was. I, they were saying like, look, everybody, like cold blue, cold red is up in the room. They doing 18 gauges, all this, putting them in my mouth and saying, okay, there's something wrong. They can do nothing at Darnell Hospital. I'm, I'm at the Fort Good Hospital. So they had to rush me over oh, to Scott and White Hospital in Temple. I didn't get a chance to like saying this is something that I'm telling people. I don't I didn't get a chance to saying what's wrong. It was people right. going in and out, in and out the room. And my doctor was Dr. Sai, he told me, you know what? This lady kept coming in, like, you may pray for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can everybody needs a prayer. Then three minutes later, you come back in and we pray. Then all of a sudden, all of a Person in the white, and he's like, I'm not gonna lie to you. You're dying, and we doing what? everything we need to do. You're like, it's one foot in and one foot out. I can't tell you. We doing everything that we supposed to do. It's like I we went by the textbook. I'm like, well, at this point, I'm already, I'm freezing now. I'm starting mm -hmm. to shake. Then I put the blanket, heat blanket. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. at least let my mother see me before. I, and like, where she live at? I'm like, she lives in Mississippi. That's eight hours away. She's not going to make it. Oh, Here, wow. She's not going to make it. You need to find somebody right now to say yes. <laughs> By the time you're saying all that, my voice and my shaking is starting to go. I'm, I'm like, fine. It was only two people in the room with like two people. It was best friends. Uh huh. One, one was Renee, Renee White, and one was Tracy. I had to point at them and tell them that they're in charge of my life now. Oh, you, wow. Like saying, have a friend, and you have to tell your friend they're in charge whether you live or die. Wow. Now I can't even talk. I can't do anything now. It's like we signed a safe word, Mark X. We, right. we have to go straight to, to operate. Straight to surgery. I woke up. I woke up and had this in. Oh, so they wow. Me, like, then they told me, it's like, you saved this life. Yes. Okay, then okay. let's do that. So I woke right. up with all this. Some people see it go on YouTube and like, yeah. No, I woke up because my heart, my, what it was, I was saying, I was smelling, I was smelling my lung collapsing. Oh, Jesus. It cannot, he could say, it cannot work on my heart. Ooh. I wrote the body. He said, it cannot work on my heart. It can work on my heart. My lungs would collapse. It worked on something else, my kidneys, my lungs, and my kidneys would collapse already. Oh. And he said, it up to you. he said it was up to you. It's not mm -hmm. up to me. It was up to God. If you make it through the night, then we can, now we can start. Wow. So I woke up with all this on the side. Like, okay, you're doing it. You're working with it. And my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a brave, blessed soul you are. Oh, my goodness. Woo, that's a lot, Demetrius. That is a lot. God wants you here because you are here to live and talk about it and let somebody else know. Donate. If you are just joining the live line, I thank you right now. This is Walking in Your Purpose Thursday night at 8 with Lens of Faith. We have Brother Demetrius Blaylock on the line who is now sharing his story about the last two heart transplants that he received and the power of God in saving his life. He woke up and was blessed to keep on moving, keep on talking and keep on walking. Now, Demetrius, there are people that need a heart or struggle with some form of heart disease. 
What would you like to tell those people right now? Don't give up. <laughs> Don't give up. You Don't might give up. mourn a heart, but we are, are you willing to do and go through what you need to get a heart? Like, I, I go to the hospital, I talk to people every day, like, you know what? I didn't want the L band, what you need. You went to the first one. I don't want, I'm going to bypass that one and go to the heart. Are you ready for this heart? It's not sitting on the shelf. <laughs> Do you want this? Or are you just saying, like some people, they cry and saying they want it, but it, it's, wow. a, it's a lot to take through, to go through, to have that. So I, I one thing I would say is don't give up. It's a lot of stuff you have to go through to get on top of the, the 1A status, to be on top of the list. If you want it, stick with it, go through it. And like saying, people have been waiting two or three years. I would mm-hmm. like you to wait one year, but don't give out. I mean, don't give in. Keep going. Keep keep fighting. It's going to be there. What type of regimen did you have to be on as far as health wise to make sure you were healthy enough to receive your heart? Oh, when the, the first one was like to get a heart, like saying I was drinking and I was smoking. Mm-hmm. While I was in the hospital, they're like, look, you can't get a heart now because your your lungs is messed up. So what did mm-hmm. I do? While I'm still with the tube and stuff, now we got to clean your heart. We got to clean your lungs out at the same time. Like I said, okay. you've seen my video. It's like, right. that's that just the video. You have, I have five tubes going into my heart. Now I have a tube in, into my side. I have a tube going down my throat. Now I have another tube that now they got to clean out every day. They got to come in and clean out my lungs to get them right for a heart right. Wow, that's powerful. I have a brother that's waiting on a, a kidney. He's on the dialysis right now. And uh, I'm praying that God allows him to receive one. Um, so I, I mentioned that question because I just need to let my brother know that, you know, not to give up and that it's very important to take care of your organs while you wait. You know, while you're in the waiting room, you got to take care of your body. You got to do what the doctor tells you to do in order to receive that new organ. That's that's powerful yes. right there. Because that's one powerful. thing I walked to last week, I walked, went to the hospital. They want to give him heart, but he's one of the person that saying that he didn't want to take his medicine and he didn't want to go to the hospital. So by the time I told him my story, he's like, you know what? They would tell me, go to them, go, we got 30 days, go to the medicine, take your medicine, and we'll put you on top of the list. Now I thought wow. to him, we didn't discuss this. He's ready. <laughs> Wow, that's good. Like that. That's good. Now, see, you're an advocate and you're working to change some lives and change their mindset and thought process just by sharing your story. Bless you, brother Blaylock. Bless yeah, you. I was the ambassador to the LVAC. Yeah, I wow. go up there. They call right now, like, hey, can you go up there and talk to such and such in the room? Sure. I'll be up there today. It doesn't matter to me. If it's mean to somebody else, changing their life and changing other people. I went to change one person and ended up changing three people in life that day. Wow. Bless your soul. Are, are you thinking about starting like a nonprofit to, to help motivate people that's waiting to receive organs? Again, as we're saying, what is the life? What is your calling? Mm-hmm. Whatever God is calling you to do, whatever it is, it is what it is. I have no idea yet. Would I be like? Yes. But is it out there? We'll see. Oh, I can't no. say no. Can't, I'm not going to say no. I'm not going to say yes. <laughs> if it's calling and saying yes, this is what I'm supposed to do. Right. And that's what I'll do. Wow. Bless you. Bless you. Now, you are an entrepreneur as well. You're the owner of Sip Drinks. Tell us a little bit about your business. <laughs> My business is a drinks that I started from a thong. I started like saying that, like, hey, I can do this. But we started with probably about five people. So I'm okay, let me try this on them. Then mm-hmm. I'm gonna try them and be third and getting proficient. Then I'm like, okay, this is something. They say right. it's good. So now I'm gonna do this. But it's like, if you want dreaming, like I had a dream, they saying maybe I can add, do, do this and do that. Then I'm like, yes. It's adult drinks, but it's still my business. <laughs> right, it's saying, business. It's that saying that hey, it's doing great. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's good. 
That's good. Do you feel like birthing your business was a part of your purpose driven life to be an entrepreneur? Probably so. Yes and no. It was like, was it out there? Yes, before. Was it there? Yes. But it's like saying that this, what is it to me? I believe like when I'm stressed, when I'm doing all this, I go back into my business and then I'm doing my best. I don't give. I don't give 80%. I give 100%, 110% every day once I give them. If you get them or if it's like, oh, I like it. It's nothing saying that you like or you can do, but I'm giving from my heart and I'm giving it to you at the same way I want it if I had it. <laughs> That's good. Your face is now totally pixelated. Can you maybe move your phone over a little bit? Start to see your body come back to the screen. I don't know what's going on. It's got to be your connection. Okay, there you go. That's perfect. There you go. Okay, you can leave it like that, Demetrius. That's good. That's okay. good. As a soldier in the United States Army, what was your job? My job was the first job. Was, all right, 93, 92. It was 14 Sierra Air Defense Artillery. Then as a project, about 10 years afterward, I changed over to mm -hmm. 88 Mike truck driver. Okay. How long were you a truck driver for? For the rest of your career? Yes, I started that from, from it was like from 2005 until 2009, four or five years. Okay. Did you yeah. serve any combat tours at all? Yeah, I heard the combat now with ADA Mike with Air Defense ADA. Air Defense. With the front okay. program, yes, with um, 101st. Wow. Thank you for your service. How did you make an impact as a soldier and senior leader by operating in your purpose? Why you served? We all make an impact. I feel like saying, "Oh, the army taught me." No, my mother, life taught me how to do stuff. So if you teach somebody else, now you have a young person coming in. You teach them the same mentality. First of all, we're all men. We all men and women. I put my two, you know, just like you, one at a time. So you have to respect, you give, earn respect, and then hey, give you know, give respect. There you earn. Yep. That's how I believe. So it's not like saying, oh, you do this, you do this, don't you do this. And it's like, okay, yeah, I'm old, I'm NCO, but guess what? That person is still a person, a human being. So when I'm just having to teach them a life, the same way I would teach my kids in life. That's powerful right there. Yep. I'm an NCO as well, so I know all about what you're talking about. <laughs> all about it. Yep. Now, you're also a father of one daughter and two, well, a set of twins. How has your overall life impacted the way in which you instill morals and values in your children by being a heart recipient? Yeah, they, if they know, like saying my my, my more than or 15, 16 years old, my daughter's 21. Like now I'm like, okay, go to school, learn this, do this, do it on your own. Don't let nobody do it. And she does hair, she does it well. Mm -hmm. And like it's 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 one for me to see that she's doing, applying herself, not mm -hmm. just sitting down and waiting for something, but she's applying herself to me. But I just tell them, like, saying, I give things, remind me of, like I'm saying, with um, the Bruce Lee. So it's saying, one is saying, knowing is not enough. We right. must apply. Willing is not enough. We must do. Always be yourself, express yourself, and have faith in yourself. Mm -hmm. You can do whatever you want to do. That's powerful right there. Now, how did they, how did you all get them through the the hard times with being in a hospital and the, the long hospital stays and stuff like that? How did they do with that? My daughter at the time was 13. I didn't want them to see that. I didn't want them to see that. My daughter came actually came My daughter came actually came down. Came down. Yep. Yep. Okay. She was old enough to she know them, to what's know going them, on, what's what going daddy on, doing, and, daddy like that. That. and, and she like actually helped. She actually helped video and do all this stuff. Video video stuff. By yeah. her being, by her being, it's me, me knowing that. Hey, wow. I gotta live for hey, her. I gotta live for me. me. Right. Ooh, you have been through. A lot of people think that they have gone through some stuff, but I gotta tell you right there that you've been through hell and back. <laughs> and still alive to talk about it. And when I have people, I, I don't know. I am think I'm going to think differently now when I talk to people and they come up to me complaining about a paper cut. You know, that ain't got nothing 
on what you've been through. So, and what's yeah, up, I can look you. at the video and let me know that you saying, oh, I can't oh, make, I can't it. make it. Yes, you can. Right. You got to deal, 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 deal. You just say, say hey, I can't, I can't. Regardless, I regardless what's going on. going on. I want you to put that link to that video when we get done in the chat box, in the comments, so everybody can take a look at that. If they catching a replay or whatever, I need to get that out because when people take a look at that, they're going to be like, wow. This man went through all of this. That's a lot. You got a story to tell. You got to get that book out. You got to get that oh, book yeah. out. Oh, yeah, man. You got to get that book out. Yes. Now, you are also one of the founding members of Kappa Lambda Chi Military Fraternity Incorporated. How has being a founding member of such an esteemed organization contributed to your purpose-driven life? That's a lot because you know, we have so we, have, we, started, we started with we started with that's original nine that's original nine and now mm -hmm. we have now five six five six, six nine nine what do it what mean do it mean to me it's the scene that you know that come, come through and know what know what, know what it takes it not just saying that people don't we're not we're not we're not we're not we're not we're not we're military military what is the difference between military and the nine nine we're not taking we're anything not away from the divine, divine, but we're seeing that, we're seeing that us being us military, being military really is Army, Navy, Army, Navy, Air Force, Air Force Marine, Marine, we have we this, have this joint, we, joint, we know we each know other. other. Like, if I'm in Army, I'm in Army. I may not be in station with you, with you and Fort Stewart, Fort Stewart but I guarantee, but I guarantee you, you, at some point in time, we've been, been together. So we have that great bond like that's that, awesome. But it's like, but it's like it's me, me that I'm not, I'm not, I'm the just because I started, I started, I could have been one of them. It doesn't make it me doesn't make higher than higher you, are. you are. I can come down, come down to that, you at, enjoy, enjoy you, you, and that you as, as a person, as a man. man. Mm -hmm. How have your brothers rallied around you since your heart transplant? Everything sometimes is good, and sometimes, sometimes like saying it's like, like some of them want to, you know, when you see it, it's like, like. Like my, like, like my mother, my mother, my mother's first mother's army. First army. She worked in the operating, to, mm -hmm. see, somebody to see, somebody see somebody that she loved and care about. about. Go through that. It's under that. It's, it's like, it's like uh, I can't do it. And first, I was mad. Sometimes I was mad. Sometimes I was mad. But sometimes you have to understand that some people cannot, cannot see it. You cannot go through that. When you see not just one, then you turn around and do it again. Yeah. So. Wow, they understand yeah, that's why yeah, I go, that's why I go to make my mission to go to go across and to go to, go to here to let them know that no, regardless what I'm going, I'm going, what I'm doing, what I'm doing, I'm doing I will come down and see you and shake your hand and tell you, thank you, thank you, doing what you do, and I applaud you because I saw you at the last crossing because you are my brother in arms and my fellow fraternal brother. So I appreciate you. And I saw you in action and I was like, oh, my goodness, he is actually just moving and grooving just like everybody else. So I didn't I didn't see a difference, but I know who you are and what you've yes. been through and your story. And I really applaud you for showing up and showing out for those brothers. That was powerful enough in itself. So I commend you for that. Thank you for your service. <laughs> How can a listening audience connect with you, Demetrius? However, how they can connect with you for your business? Um, on Facebook? Are you on Instagram? Facebook is Demetrius and DJ Sib or you or you. Somebody else or somebody inbox me like that. Yeah, they're counting. They're never too busy they're to talk to business. Business. It doesn't matter. It doesn't like, matter. Okay. Like, okay. Um, I heard it. Um, I heard it. How you doing? How you doing? No problem. No problem. I don't have, I don't have the Instagram. I do. I do have, have an Instagram. Instagram. I don't have a Twitter. <laughs> I'm too old. But if I have, if I have, stuff, I have you can't get you with can't me get or somebody else. Somebody else. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Now, is is your mom the one that sells the Michelle Obama purses? Yes. 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 <laughs> we need to get your mama link added to this chat too. Cause she she owns something with those purses. Those purses are rocking out now. Let her know That's I so said bad. thank you. <laughs> Let her know that. Is there anything else you would like to add, Demetrius, before we end this uh episode? Uh, most of the time, uh, like the same like, like you know, Again, with my Facebook today, you have it. You have it all saying. 
you know, starve you know, your, uh, distraction. your uh, distraction mm. and feel your, your, your focus. You can't focus can't on focus what you go with if you're, you're worried, worried about, about, worried about what, what other people say about you. Say about you. Say about you. Run, your race Run your race and pace yourself and pace on how, how did you feel. Did you feel. And then you know, like then, you know, I, I, I have one that I wanted, I went and I've been reading every day. Everybody, you know, everybody know, the, the uh, land to you, and you have a poem that says, I too, I too, <laughs> seen America. Seen America. Wow. I am, the, I am the darker, darker brother, brother to eat in eat the kitchen, in the kitchen when company, when company comes, com- com- um, but I am black, I am, but I laugh, but I laugh, and I eat, and well, I eat well, and grow strong, grow stronger. Tomorrow, tomorrow I'll be at the table. At the table. When company comes, company mm-hmm. comes. Nobody, nobody dares to say dare to, me, to me. Eat in the kitchen. Eat in the kitchen. Then mm. beside, the beside. They'll see how beautiful. They'll see how beautiful I am. I am. And be a shame. 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 You know, it's like you know, like, 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 like stop doing things. Stop doing things for show. That's what I'm telling people. Stop doing things for show. Don't front. Don't front for others when you don't have. Don't have it. You know, don't have you, you don't, don't have it, you, you don't have, have it. You don't but have when you do have it, when you do have it, you don't have to you don't have to do no work. Like mm-hmm. saying we're starting from the bar, bar from now, the bar. Here. now I'm here. I'm here, you know, here and I've been, been here so hard. I know I know it's been hard, it's been hard, <laughs> but it's been uh, it's been going. Keep going. I know That's other people I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I know people are probably listening or will listen to it. When you comment below with struggle that you have, as you know, people have abusive sickness and everything. Whatever you have whatever you have a struggle with. If you put it in the comments somewhere like that, guess what? Guess what? It's not a struggle anymore. It's a struggle anymore. It's a process that you can make now you can make now you can make what can I do before and what steps do I need to do to get this process done process done. Wow. That's powerful. I, you know, you just given me a new outlook on a few different things, especially um, as you talked about cleansing the body, preparing to receive your heart. That is very vital and important for people to understand that when they're facing um, an organ failure, whatever organ that is failing in their body. And like I said, I have a brother that needs a kidney. And I just, that, that just spoke life to me about protecting your organs because you never know if you need to donate or if you, you know, need a donor, you know? So I, this is, this is a powerful episode. I got to tell people that, and I pray that this reaches hundreds of people, thousands of people, because this is truly a blessing for other people to hear and understand that we must protect our temple. Our bodies are our temple and we need to protect what what we're walking in because this is our life. This is our life. And I thank you so much. I commend you for coming on the show today. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for agreeing to tell your story about your heart condition. And I pray that you become an advocate and well, you're already an advocate. I pray that you are blessed with something a powerful platform to reach hundreds of thousands of people and tell your story because you have a a magnificent story to tell and you are walking in your purpose by the glory of the Lord. I got to tell you that. And I thank God for saving you because we wouldn't have this story from your own mouth had you not survived. I thank God for allowing you to keep walking in your purpose. (sighs) This has truly been a blessing for me. I've learned something myself now i gotta share with my brother and i'm gonna send this episode directly to him Derek pierce yeah, 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 like, oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah i used to yeah, drink i used to smoke, smoke like everybody like, like saying at one point, point that you decide you saying enough enough, 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 enough i don't desire i don't desire to smoke anymore because i know down now that now purpose in life i have now if i do if i do i take i take many pills many 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 pills yeah so you still have a, a, a strict regimen of medication? <laughs> yes, before I had like yeah, 30 like some pills a day. Woo! It usually go down it's like I have 40 and then 40. 40. 40. Then like saying now, then, like, saying I, now have, I have with my, my eyesight. And then my, I had to have a severe migraine for almost two years straight every day. Wow. 
So they don't know what they don't know why they take them 32 shots, both our shots in the head. That's a no stop the arm. More do you do acupuncture? No, they haven't. Yeah, they haven't. You haven't tried acupuncture? So I, I, I ain't been through what you've been through, <laughs> but I'm telling you, I used to have migraines and I did acupuncture and it helped me. It blessed my life to do acupuncture. So I just wanted to share that with you. But I, like I said, your story out, outweighs what I've been through in my life. <laughs> so yeah, when people say that, I come in. Did acupuncture. Yeah, I'm like I did the 32 shots in the head. Both got shots, got shots, shots nose. Mm -hmm. And there's like, and there's like, I think it's something that they can't begin to see from you with the medical conjunction with each other. Junction with each other. And and wait, wait, not help, help me. me. It may help it somebody else, but it's not. Like today, like today, every day, every day. I deal with the migraine every day. I push forward, push forward every day. Wow, wow, wow. Well, you keep pushing forward and don't you give up. And, uh, I, we need you. We need you on the wall to tell your story as many times as you can, because there's people out there that definitely need to hear your story. And once again, I thank you for coming on this show. Thank you all to my listening viewers for uh, tuning in today. If you have any questions at this time, please go ahead and type your question and we can have Demetrius respond or I can respond. However, um, but we got a few minutes left for um, questions, if there are any questions. If you're catching the replay, please leave a question. And I'm sure Demetrius will come back in and um, share the answer to your question if you're catching the replay. So at this time, we're waiting to see if there's anyone with any questions. And if not, Demetrius, we're going to... Um, do the outro oh, and oh, we're gonna go, 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 to, go to the video. The video. Can you post that? Can you post that video? The link to the video in the comments for me. I need everybody to see that video. That video speaks volumes. Hopefully, you can get it up there displayed. This is question and answering time. If you have any questions, please put your questions in the comments. I thank you all for viewing today. This has been an excellent, excellent uh, episode. And I actually learned something from my, my episode. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Well, I don't see any questions at this time. So you probably get some on the replay. And I just want to tell you just a hold right there, Mr. Blaylock, and we're just going to do the outro, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on the show today. I would like to thank all my followers and listeners for tuning in to today's show. You have been listening to Walking in Your Purpose, Thursday night at 8 with Lens of Faith. Connect with me now. I want to hear from you. Please like, share, and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Lens of Faith. God bless.